well, we're back for another video. And that begs the usual question, what are we doing today? Well, today we are dealing with one of these. Now, those of you who have seen one of these and know what they are, are probably licking your lips about now. Those of you who haven't probably look a little confused. This label might give you a bit of a heads up. This is basically a 24 volt Bay Marie. <laughs> Um, or a single Bay Marie. So let me go over what this actually is and why I have it. So, of course, the lid comes off here. And there is a little tray that comes out. And that usually holds some food. Or whatever you're planning to heat. Inside, there is a lower chamber that is slightly smaller. And that's designed to take some water. This is a drain valve here to drain the water out. And this is a 24 volt power plug. Now, I have a six wheel drive military ambulance that happens to have a 24 volt system that uses very similar plugs, albeit the three pin version. They are still nonetheless 24 volts. So, I plan to adapt this to the vehicle because I also have the 100 amp 24 volt generator to go in addition to the normal alternator, um, as well as 580 watts of solar and 135 amps or 235 amp hour batteries for the 24 volt series. So, what I want to do today is firstly, I think I have secured a supply of connectors for these, I'm not sure yet, but even after I get those, I'm still gonna to need to know the pinout. And because this doesn't have a lot of information on it, um, or who manufactured it, uh, or I guess there is this, but uh, there's not a lot of data on them out there. I'm going to have a quick Google before I do this. And it does tell me that it's going to pull 55 amps at 28 volts. So uh, that's handy to know. But it also means I'm going to need some hefty cable. So I'm going to do a quick little search and see if there is any information on this. If there isn't, we might either take the arse off it, have a look at the state of the coils. We might need to do that anyway. And we might even have a look at the service hatch that's on the back. There is a service hatch here somewhere. Oh, that's just a placard. So anyway, we'll have to take the bottom off and just do a continuity check on the coils, figure out the pin out, and uh, make note of it all. I'm happy with this one. It doesn't seem to have had too much use because this seal is actually in very good condition. Um, the bottom, however, looks a little bit warped. Let's get a light in here and see. So, it does look like it might have been used for frying at some point, but uh, it may have been a little hot. So, coils might not be in good condition. I don't know. <laughs> Elements, I should say, not the coils. So, uh, yeah, let's do a quick bit of Google search, and we'll be right back. Alright, so, <clears throat> I've done a bit of research here, <clears throat> and I have tracked down, this is a, a British-made one. Um, and used also in the Centurions. I've seen different variations of these, but all pretty much the same thing. Uh, one thing that does differentiate the British one is this valve for draining the water is actually designed for making tea. Um, I wondered why they didn't just have a tap on there, but yeah, you hold it, make your tea, and you let it go, and it automatically shuts off. So that explains that, and people would drink hot water directly out of the thing, so yeah, it makes sense. Um, now, contrary to the way I've seen these used, or not contrary, in confirmation of the way I've seen these things used, um, most of them would completely dispense with this thing, which also explains why it's really clean. Now, um, that's designed, you, you would decant your fruit into there, put water in, sit this in here and it would heat it up. Um, but most of them, and the way I saw it done, is we would pack a few tins in here and top it up with water. And uh, that seems to be what the British used to do. That, or those plastic retort pouches they use now. That means you also get more water in here for your tea and coffee, or um, in the ration packs I'm used to, you get mash spud and a few other things. You use, actually, quite a bit of hot water. So that would make sense why the bottom of this has been so hot and that hasn't been used. So, um, again, there's not much information on the pinouts, and that's not something you really get given information on when you're bouncing around in the back as a recruit. 
Um, you tend to probably know more about that if you become a mechanic. So, um, yeah, I'm still going to have to open this thing to find out all about the elements and the pinouts and all the rest. I can probably deduce a bit with a multimeter, but I want to open it and see the state of things inside anyway. So, uh, let's get the arse end off this. All right, so this is definitely British because it's flat blade screws. I hate flat blade screws with a passion. And these look like they've been removed at one point in the past because they're a little bit cockeyed. Oh, and they are countersunk flat blade screws. Oh, all right. And they are fine thread Whitworth countersunk screws that are stainless and not magnetic. This is going to take a while. We'll be back. Oh, that was an unpleasant few minutes. But we're about to lift the lid off and get this rubber seal off as well. See if we can get this cap off. Well, I guess you're all coming off. And there's some insulation under here. Not surprising. Alright. I hope this is not asbestos insulation. Could well be. We'll just treat it gently. Probably fiberglass looking at this, but at some point we'll find our heating coils. This actually feels a lot like asbestos, really. I think I might put this cap back on and use the multimeter. Um, yeah, it's got that, it's got that old tank feel. Yeah, no, there's definitely asbestos underneath that. This is not fiberglass. So I think this is going to get packed back in here and stabilized. I don't want that all over my workshop. All right, we'll do it a different way. We might take this actual socket out and see what's connected to that. All right, so for those of you freaking out about this asbestos, I have moistened my tabletop with some spray and wipe. I'm using a rag which I will discard pick it all up so that it doesn't get loose and I have turned the air conditioning off so I'm not blowing it around whilst I clean it up I'm keeping the air very still in here and I'm also making sure I wipe down my arms and fingers and stuff because the stuff can go through the side of yours through your skin a bit like fiberglass can as well anyway um, let's get it back on the bench after a bit of a clean up so let's attack the socket side, will we? Let's see if we can get to the pins from there. All right, so a few more irritating flat blade screwdriver screws later. We've removed these screws. Now this is clearly the plate that holds that socket in and these are clearly the screws that hold the socket to that plate. So I'm quite keen to get under that plate. But I'm not sure if they have the right tools. This guy might get in under there a bit. I think the rubber seal is a bit, has adhered itself. So we need to just give it a gentle lift as we go around. Just gently so we don't tear it. I don't want to have to cut another rubber seal for this. I'd rather keep that one intact. Mostly because if we spill water down the front of this thing, we don't want to go in there. I'm pretty sure that's what they're for. Now let's get Separate that off. All right, I can feel some tension and yet more asbestos in here. All right, so well, at least there are nylock nuts under there, which mean undoing them screws would be a bit useless. All right, there is, I don't know if you can see in the viewfinder here, there is a whole bunch of asbestos packed in every inch of this thing. Um, look, it could well be fiberglass, but got the look and feel of asbestos. At least it's not the blue stuff. And there is a second layer of stuff that's a little bit grey looking as well and in my experience fiberglass is never grey. Um, at least with these things. So multimeter it is. You know what, while we've got it, rather than put the screws back in, let's multimeter this. See if we can come to any kind of 
idea. Let's go ohms mode. Let's go right down to 200. I can't expect something that pulls 50 amps at 24 volts to be particularly high impedance. So we'll start with that pin and see what we get on this one. Nothing on that one. Well, we had something there for a minute. Oh, it's all over the shop. Let's have a look here. I really need to do that and put my hands in the way. So 4.6 ohms, that sounds like a heating coil to me. Let's try these other two here. I think there's probably two heating coils here. So 4.7 ohms across those. So are they in parallel or we've got two? I think we have two heating elements in here. Of one with 4.6 and one point one with 4.7, and so that is the upper and lower pins on here. Let's just double check upper and lower pins. So that's 60 60 ohms now. Okay, let's try this one. New uh, eight point three ohms. Interesting. It's throwing values all over the place. Now that's eight point something ohms. So I reckon between six and eight ohms is about right, and it's upper and lower for the two elements. All right. So we've got two elements left and right. That's probably about all I'm going to be able to tell from that. Probably not polarity, however, being as a heating element, um, polarity might not make a lot of difference. Um, but it does mean when I find some wiring information for this, I can pretty well tell if I've got the right one. But there is a scary amount of asbestos in that thing, so I definitely want to make sure it's sealed up. So let's get this sealed up properly and we'll be back. Alright, so the next job here is to uh, test this. So I found, um, I pulled the little insulators off some crimp terminals. I'm going to try and improvise a couple of connections here till my plugs arrive. Now I did find plugs and I found the part numbers. I'm importing one for this from the UK. And I found a couple of connectors um, from ITT Canon, which are the company that manufactures the plugs that we use in the ambulance. I'll put all those part numbers up in the description at some point if I get round to it. But for now, I'm going to solder these terminals together in such a way that I can still actually connect some wires to them. So we'll go back from there. Now we're ready to do these terminals. Let's turn some extraction fan on. I really need to get around to fixing that one of these days too. I've got some plastic interfering with it. Now one of these terminals is a bit loose now. That should be about right there. Let's see if I can convince them to solder together without it dropping down. No, I'm not. Give us a moment to tension that. I took the terminal off and gave it a bit of a squeeze. And now I've got to reach it around the camera here and try and get some solder into these. Could be easier said than done though. I might try and get some of this flux core happening here. I think I might have a better idea. I might try and get some flux onto that and uh, get Mr. Stoner Torch in there. Mr. Stoner Torch out here. A little tube of flux. Let's give this a gentle squeeze. I keep putting too much in out of this tube. A little bit of flux here, that's probably all I'm going to need. And uh, get this nice and hot. Don't want to be dropping too much of this in that plug either. Looks like I've dropped a fair bit in there. I'm going to have to fish that out. Although, at 24 volts at 50 amps, this is probably going to vaporize it if I don't. There we go, that went through. 
should be hot enough now even without the flame I should be able to melt that in now it's cooled off very quickly all right let's try this let it warm up a little bit there we go we're wicking in between it nicely now all right that should be suitable let's do the other one off camera got our terminals soldered together here and they're cooled off this should make a temporary connection that we can bolt some wires to and we can see if this thing works before I realize if I've wasted money buying plugs for it all right let's uh, see what we can do tomorrow all right so a couple of days have passed and some stuff magically fell out of the sky namely some uh, 6 mil cable, it's double insulated, and some more terminals. Pretty sure I can make a test lead and hook this up to the 24 volt batteries and see how they go. I might even end up using jumper leads to do it, but this should allow me to connect to the plug at least. Um, I'm not sure what polarity I should use on that plug, but I don't think it really matters. I think they're just ceramic heating elements. So, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's get cracking and hook some wire up to this thing. Alright, we have this Frankenstein creation happening here. This is not something at all I would ever consider leaving permanently. This is for a temporary five minute connection. It is heavily soldered though, and we've got this heavy cable connected to those pins. This should at least tell us if this thing will boil some water. And once that's done, I'm going to cut the whole thing off and put a proper plug on. We're going to have to wait till it arrives first. So I think I'm going to drag this outside and uh, We'll get up to 24 volts and see what happens. Okay, so we're outside with no wind filter, so bear with me. Um, I have my jumper leads off the 24 volt batteries, two 135 amp hours in series, my 1000 amp welding cables, and this piece of cable here. We have our boiling vessel and a little bit of water we're going to add to it. All right, we have our connections here. That I don't think are shorting. I hope they're not. I'll just double check. Make a double sure. All right, I hope I've got this wired up. I'm expecting some sparking, so let's just briefly touch this and see what happens. Whoa. Something went pop in there. All right. Something's gone pop in there, so let's clip this on and see if we get boiling water. Alright, I don't know if it's warming up yet, but we'll find out in a minute. Hope I don't boil these batteries. Alright, there was a little bit of steam puffed out of here. And my cables are getting warm. I'm not sure what's happening in there, but I'll give it a couple of minutes. I'm going to check the battery vaults inside while we do this. Alright, we have our battery vaults and they're currently 24.4. So it's not a dead short, luckily. Um, now that we aren't pulling through the shunt, so there won't be an accurate representation of current. See here, so the water is warming up. We have heat in the bottom. Feels like it's working. All right. So we don't have a dead short and we have heat happening in the correct area. That's a good sign. I haven't smoked the cables yet. The batteries haven't exploded. All of those things are good, considering I have no fuses in line with this. Um, it is going to be interesting. I think I put a 200 amp fuse in there. Um, so we'll find out whether all this works. Oh, I can hear a little bit of sizzling going on in here. The water is rapidly warming up. That's working pretty damn well. A little bit of green paint in there, so I'm, I think I'm glad I'm getting all this sorted. We'll be back in a minute once this starts boiling. So it's a slightly overcast day, and it's worth noting that uh, my solar panels are still putting in 5.1 amps to contribute to all of this as well. So doing pretty well. And we're 24.5 volts, so we're doing all right. It's uh, not pulling the batteries all the way down, which is nice. This actually pulls about as much as my little uh, two horsepower um, electric outboard, and I run it off a single battery at 12, uh, 12 volts at 50 amps or thereabouts. 
So pulling 24 volts at 55 amps through this probably isn't all that much of a hard job for these batteries. But uh, we're going to see how this goes in a moment. I've put the lid on to help keep the heat in. While we're waiting for it to boil, I'm just checking with my fingers here. And it feels to be about sort of 35, 40 degrees on those leads. I could get my thermal image up and probably tell you exactly, but it's pretty close to body temperature on those leads. So I think they will do. But based on the spark I got out of that connection, I think I'm going to put an isolation switch in when I make the lead. So we can plug it in and I can turn it on and off with a switch. So the arcing is done in a controllable fashion. Partly because I think if I plug one of these leads in under load, I could end up welding the plug on, and that could be a bit of a problem. And I don't want a DC arc happening, and not a sustained arc. That could be a real problem. So, yeah, that'll be good. Um, however, in that situation, there is a, a breaker inside that, uh, behind the driver's seat there, that I can circuit break everything with. I still don't want to have to do that. So, yeah, I think inline switch is probably on the books. Let's open this thing up and see how warm she is. I'm going to just swizzle my finger. Oh, that, okay, that's too hot to touch now. That's been probably about four to five minutes that it's been there. It's actually working really well. I'll be back in one moment. Okay, so about probably eight minutes in, we've got steam coming out of the top. I think we've got a rolling boil here. Let's have a look. Yep, we do. We have a rolling boil. How's that? Beautiful. All right, I'm going to disconnect it and pour myself some hot water. Let's close our lid and we'll disconnect. Oh, we were welded. <laughs> My concerns about it welding was um, probably well founded. Uh, now, let's have a look here. This little spigot's supposed to work like this. We're supposed to be able to pour ourselves a cup of tea. This is a cup I used earlier and I need to clean anyway. So the valve does work nicely. Now we've got all that junk in here out of the bottom probably because I need to clean everything out. But we are going to be able to get a cup of tea off 24 volts. And with that big 100 amp alternator that I want to put in here I shouldn't have any worries about this. Oh, that gets hot after a little bit. Gotta be careful there. Yeah, ah, it leaks out the end of that valve. So, yeah, I will be careful of that at some point. All right. Yeah, I think we need to wash all the shit out of it. But, um, yeah, we'll give it a few run-throughs and see how we go. Now, more importantly, I want to check what my battery volts is now doing. So now that we've disconnected the load, our battery volts have shot up to 25.8. And solar panel is still putting in 4 amps. So even without that alternator, I'm probably still going to be quite okay with that. I am pleased as punch, especially considering that was a donation. And I see why they drilled the holes in the top here. Yep. So I've disconnected it, and it's still boiling away in there. So it retains a fair bit of heat. I think I might put a bit more water in there just to help it. Right, so I poured a cup of cold water back in this, and it's um, still actually too hot to touch. And it's, I think there is some thermal energy inside uh, because it's very well insulated, <laughs> full of asbestos, but that's all pretty well stable and, and contained. Um, outside is not even, well, it is slightly warm on the base, about 40 degrees at the most. But everything else is cool to the touch. Inside is very hot. So I think if I were to get that volume of water hot and put this little can in the top and put like a, a mince or a stew or something in there, and shut the lid, I'm pretty sure it would slow cook all day um, and just turn it on periodically. Definitely putting an inline switch. I am pleased as punch that this works, but uh, this little spigot is going to need a bit of work. I think I'm going to um, unscrew this and possibly get burnt hands. Oh, there's the spring and the valve. So we'll push our valve open. I think the rubber seal in there needs some work, so I'm going to let this drain out and uh, we'll work on that. Okay, she doesn't look too bad. So the rubber seals actually looks like a synthetic rubber, so it's actually not too bad. I might put a bit of plumber's grease on it, but it feels like there's a little bit already. 
So we'll put you back in. Could be just that the spring wasn't done up tight enough. So we'll put this back in here. Oh, that's hot. Well, definitely very achievable to get a hot meal out of my ambulance in this thing. So I think we're just going to give this a bit of a tighten up here. Hopefully that won't leak as much. Alrighty, now we're going to pack things up. Okay, so we're back inside in the safety of air conditioning. Now it's down to finding the plugs. Now, I found an eBay listing with one left of the original leads for those um, boiling vessels. The problem I had is I wanted to connect it to the three pin plug. Now the boiling vessel has a four pin plug as you've seen. The three pin plug for the ambulance is a different type and it's uh, made by ITT Cannon. I'm going to write that out here. ITT Cannon with two ends. Now I know my handwriting is shocking. Um, I used to have a nice clean handwriting until I got diagnosed with MS or myelitis of the spinal cord at the C6. That kind of screwed my handwriting so don't shoot me. Anyway, the part number from ITT Cannon, now Element 14 still has a few of these, is an MS 3106F20-19P. That's P for pins, uh, 19 I think is the shell size, F is the orientation, 3106 is the shell type, MS is, yeah. Uh, anyway, I found the breakdown of that in the ITT Canon thing. Anyway, I went through all the different combinations of those part numbers that would technically work to fit that socket. And this is the only one I could find on sale that wasn't on back order. So it's a straight through plug. I've ordered a few of them. They cost me about 92 bucks for two of them uh, shipped from Element 14. So that will be good. The other plug I couldn't unfortunately identify what plug that was. Um, so I'll have to wait till it arrives. So that will be another episode when I make the lead up and put the inline switch and everything. As you probably guessed, this is getting towards the end of the video here. So, um, the next episode is going to be leads, but if you've got yourself a Parenti like an RFSV or an FFR or an ambulance, that I'm pretty sure should fit the 24 volt power sockets that are on the board. They're the panel mount sockets. If you get a part number with an S here, it means it's a socket, not a pin, and it won't fit them. So, that was valuable information that has taken me weeks to figure out. That's why I'm sharing it with such emphasis. Well, I guess there's not much more we can do other than staring at my mangled hands here. So, I think we'll say so long and thanks for all the fish guys. Um, and we'll see you when the next lead shows up and we'll do an episode on that. I'm just super stoked that this thing works and that I'm actually going to be able to have flameless heating that I can do while I'm traveling. And I'm pretty sure tankies for many years were absolutely enamored with these things too. So... We'll see you all in the next one. Hope you had fun.